say to India, thank you for that beautiful song. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You know, tell you what, folks, without grace, what would we be? We'd be lost. That's what we'd be. Thank God for grace. And grace is sufficient enough to save us, and it's sufficient enough to keep us. Amen. Amen. To sustain us in the journey of life. And uh, it's just a great opportunity to know what it means to taste of grace. Taste of grace and see that it's good. Amen. Amen. God has saved us by His marvelous grace, and He's come into our hearts and into our lives through His Holy Spirit that lives within the heart and the life of the believer. Uh, this morning, before I get into this morning's message, I do want to make mention uh, Mr. Vernon York is with us. He's a missionary to the West Indies. Amen. And this is D. Talkington's brother, okay? He's in town, and so uh, I'm going to, he's going to share a little bit tonight about his mission work. He's been over there for how many years now? 17. 17 years. And the West Indies. And so he's going to be sharing some tonight with his folks. And so... Uh, let's look forward to that. It's always good to know what God's doing in other countries. And uh, every time I hear about what God is doing in other countries, uh, I just look and say, we are so blessed, y'all. We are truly, truly blessed. And so be mindful of that this evening as we come back. During the worship hour, I'll pick back up on the book of Galatians where I'm teaching through on Sunday nights, next Sunday night. But this morning, we're going to be talking about something a little bit different this morning. We're going to be talking about our hearts, okay? And you know, it's sure enough, you need to go visit once in a while a cardiologist or something to have a checkup on your heart. Well, you know, that's true spiritually as well, amen? And something we've got to realize in the journey of life, sometimes we have to go to the heart doctor, and we know who the heart doctor is. It's our Heavenly Father, amen, <laughs> spiritually speaking. And so this morning, that's what we're going to be talking about, a visit to the heart doctor and David understood that because let me share something with you. There were times in David's life where he realized the value of making sure that your heart was right. And when you look at King David's life, when he was a really a very young lad, it says basically in God's word that he was a young man after God's own what? Heart. And so what we've got to realize is that his heart was really tender when he was young. And he actually witnessed the fact that he, he was in the battle with Goliath and the fact that he was able to escape that, able to escape a lion, able to escape a bear, even Saul and everything. But in the journey of life, what began to happen was this. He did not monitor his heart. He didn't keep a close watch on his heart. And do you know that you and I sometimes in the journey of life we may start out very strong in our faith. We may go through some experiences, and boy, God is real, real, and He's dear to our hearts. But somewhere in the journey, we seem to kind of just fade away. And if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves like David, living a life that's really not pleasing in God's eyes. But y'all know how that He repented in Psalm 51, how He restored unto Him the joy of His salvation and how that David began to pick up some things in his life and begin to see how that there's a God of restoration. But he had to go and he had to visit with God. And, he, and God was his heart doctor, spiritually speaking, to make sure things got back in shape in his own personal life. And we're going to be looking at that this morning. So if you have your Bibles with you, look with me in Psalm 139. Psalm 139. And we're going to read the last two verses of Psalm 139. Now watch what these words here say. This is what David says. He's open and he's honest before God. He says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in a way everlasting. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I'm so thankful for your word. We know that your word is holy, it's infallible, it's that which we can look to for leadership and for guidance in our journey of life. Father, we can depend upon your word because your word is forever settled in heaven. We know, Father, that in the journey of life, a lot of things will pass from our midst, but your word is forever true. And as we have now read these few verses here, penned by David himself, Father, I pray that we'll just let these words come alive in our hearts and in our lives that we may realize that we need to monitor our hearts and truly there are times in our life, Father, where we just need to visit with you and let you do some great work 
in our hearts and in our lives. And Father, this morning now, I just pray as we go through this morning's message that you'll just bless this time. I just surrender this message unto you. May you be honored. May you be glorified. May you be uplifted. May our hearts be touched that we might forever serve thee, Father, in a way that illustrates and demonstrates that we've had an encounter with you. Bless now this time as I surrender this message unto you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Okay. These two verses that we've read here in Psalm 139 is very important. And when we read those verses, remember this. David has already made some great observations about his life. By the time he gets to these two verses, we've got to realize that in Psalm 139, he already pens some magnificent words that we need to be mindful of. And the reason that he penned 139 was because he realized that God is inescapable. There's nowhere that you can go. There's nothing you can ever do in life. Guess what? God's going to be there. He's always there. Was it John Wayne that said something about going west? And you'll say, well, I'm going to go out here and go west somewhere. He says, where nobody's ever been. He said, yeah, but God's already been there. And so what we've got to realize that in the journey is this, is that there's nothing you can do. There's no way you can escape God. So let me show you a little secret with you. Are you ready? You can run as far as you want to. You can involve yourself in all sin that you want to. But at the end of the day, God is still there. You cannot outrun or flee from God or hide from God. And David finally came to that place in his life where he said, You got me, God. You got me in a strong headlock and I can't get out. Tap out. Guess what? He wins at the end of the day. And so what he says is this. He concludes with those two verses. Listen to what he says in the previous verses. Look with me in Psalm 139, verses 1, 2, and 3. This is kind of the prelude to it. Watch what he says. He says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and you've known me. Well, that's being honest, isn't it? Lord, you've searched me and you've known me. Thou knowest my downsetting, my uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. He says, look, Lord, whether I lay down, whether I rise up, no matter what I do, where I go in life, I cannot escape you. And what he's saying is, I'm finally coming to the place to where I just need to surrender Amen. and find some peace. So then after he says that, he begins to, to fathom the fact of the miraculously of God, how miraculous God is and, and how that he is awesome, he's all-knowing, he's omnipotent, he's sovereign. And as he begins to ponder upon it and as he begins to think about it, listen to what else he has to say. Watch this. In verses 14 down through verse 17. Watch what he says. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. Now watch what he says. My substance was not hidden from thee when I was made secretly and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. He says, my eyes did see my substance yet being unformed. And I'm just going to stop there for just a minute. Be as nice as I can. If you believe that abortion is a woman's right and it's okay, you've got a scriptural problem. There you go. And nobody many preachers will say that. It doesn't matter what a politician says. There you go. Either we have to believe in this book or we believe what somebody says. This book says, he says, you knew me. I can't get too deep in this because of young people. But you knew me when I was just a spark. Amen? Amen. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Pretty awesome. Now watch this. Thine eyes did see my substance yet being informed, and in the book all my members were written, which in continual was in fashion, when as yet there was none of them 
How precious also are thy works or thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. Now let me back up for just a moment. This has nothing to do with this morning's message, actually. But the statement that I made just while I go about the fact that he knew, he knows our substance. The moment that spark of life comes, life is there. Right. But I will say this this morning. Where abortions have happened, you remember this from the depths of your heart into your inner being. That as sure as that has happened, there's a place outside of Jerusalem. And it's called Calvary. That's right. Amen. Amen. It's called Calvary. It's because of Calvary that you can be forgiven. Amen. You can go there and you can lay it at Jesus' feet. And let the blood that flew that, that, that day that came down that cross on Calvary. Right. Let him forgive you. And pick up the pieces. And walk on in life. I always want people to know that. Because as sure as you preach this side, the law side, we must understand that there's grace. Amen. Amen. And his grace is sufficient That's right. to forgive us in the journey of life. See, David made this observation. He says, God, look at my heart, and God, I realize I cannot escape. No, no matter what happens in life, I cannot escape your presence. See, so even though David sees God's great work, he sees his need. And he needed a spiritual checkup at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, that's the reason he said and quoted and wrote verses 23 and 24. He says, God, I give up. Years ago, what do you used to call it, uncle? Is what they used to call it? Yeah, I give up. At the end of the day, he finally just gives to, gets to a place where he just says, okay, search me, know my heart, see if there's any wicked way, although I know there is. <laughs> Help me, oh God, and lead me in a way everlasting. That's what he's saying. See, so this morning, what I want us to do is I want us to notice some great words that are found here and make application of them into our own spiritual lives that we might have a spiritual checkup within our own lives in regard to going to God our Father who is the spiritual doctor of our lives that we might have some healing within our own lives it's so so important one of the first things I want us to notice this morning in regard to the text that we've read is this I want us to notice a willingness to have an examination that's very important I want you to notice this. David came to the place to where he was willing to have a spiritual examination. That's the reason that he says, search me. He's willing to go there. See, many times in life, we don't want to go to the doctor because of what he might find. Now, let's be honest. Do you know that when you start feeling kind of bad about something and you, you think on it and you ponder on it and all of this and you say, no, I don't want to go to the doctor because I know that he's going to tell me there's something wrong. And, uh, I just, I'd rather really go on. You know, before I had my stroke, I didn't tell anything to Elena, but I told her later. <coughs> before I had my stroke, there was times where I'd be out there and I'd have these, whoa, these dizzy moments kind of strange. And I'd say, oh, Shay, you're fine, go on. So you didn't know about it till the end either, did you? Shake it off, go, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And I'm not, I don't want to dare go to the doctor, the first thing I know what he's going to tell me is, son, you need to lose some weight. <laughs> I know that's what he's going to say. And then I know he's going to say this or this or this. And then he's going to say, we've got to go get some blood drawn. We need to check your blood, son. What's going on? And I'm thinking, mm, no, I'll just, I'll just keep idling on along. Because I don't want no one to know what the doctor is going to say. Let me ask you a question. Is that true in your life as well? Yeah, there's a lot of times you, you don't want to go because you may say, oh, he's going to tell me I've got to do this, I've got to do that. See, watch this. David himself, when he quotes those two verses at the end of this chapter, did not want to leave anything unturned. That's the reason he said what he said. That's so important. See, watch what else he has to say in regard to that. What does it mean for the fact that sometimes in life's journey, 
And maybe we don't want to go to see a heart doctor because of this reason. We don't want to find out what the diagnosis might be or find out something that we need to know. So what we do, we kind of push things, push things, push things off. But David said, I've come to the place to where I'm going to spiritually visit the heart doctor to where when I visit with him, I'm going to let him give a full diagnosis of my heart that I might be corrected, that I might move in the right direction. So see, also we find that also this is so important for us to realize because when we look also in the book of Psalms, he makes another suggested comment in regard to that in verse twenty, uh, verses 1 and 2 of chapter 26, the verse of Psalm, uh, chapter of Psalms. Watch what he says. He says, Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore will I, shall I also not slide. But watch what he says. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Test my heart and my mind. What is he saying? He's saying, Lord, I'm willing to go before you to let you examine my heart Amen. in my life. You know, when we say that, let me ask you a question. Let me ask myself a question. Are we really honestly willing to go before God and say, God, here is my heart. I'd like for you to examine my heart. Look at it. Maybe my attitude needs to be adjusted. Maybe the way I look at things needs to be adjusted. See, when we say, search me, O God, know my heart, buddy, that throws a lot of things on the table. And let me share something with y'all. This is not even in my notes. Don't you listen to me very carefully. That is something I have to constantly monitor in my life. That's where a lot of preachers get in trouble. <laughs> if I told a couple of knuckleheads what I thought this morning, <laughs> we'd all be in trouble. <laughs> There's something I have to do all the time. Guard my heart. Guard my mind. Even though you know this, and other people may not know this, guard your heart. Guard your mind. Have to. The biggest thing in my life is this. Guard my heart. And let God take care of the ministry. And if that's true in my life, it's true in all of our lives. Amen. We need to let God take care of our hearts and He'll take care of the rest. So true for us to understand that. And you know what? That's not easy. It's not easy to do that in the journey of life. So when we think about that, remember this. We can only find healing spiritually when we let Him examine our lives. And when we let Him examine our lives, then the spiritual healing can come. And we need that so desperately in our lives. So when we ponder upon it and we think about it, what is the real application on that? The application, excuse me, the application is simply this. We ourselves, are we willing to let God examine us spiritually? And that's the big question. Are you and I willing to let God examine our hearts spiritually? And if we're able to do that, and if we're able to say, search me, O God, and know my heart, try me and know my thoughts, and see if there's any wicked way within me, lead me in a way everlasting, I will tell you something. You've made the first step toward the spiritual heart doctor. And that's where it starts in the journey. And it's so important. The second thing I want to share with us this morning is this. In the spiritual checkup or examination, might we notice some areas that are examined? Two very, very important areas that need to be examined. First of all, he says this. He says, examine my heart. And that's what he starts with. Search me, O God, and know my heart. How does this work? That's something important for us to understand. How does it actually work? It works in four areas of our lives. First of all, we need to have a diagnostic test of our heart. 
examination of our heart. Well, spiritually speaking, look with me. Psalm chapter 7, okay? We're going to be in the Scripture from here on out now, okay? Scripture. Look what it says in Psalm chapter 7. Verse 9. Very important verse. God gives us a diagnostic test of our hearts. Watch what he says. Oh, let the wicked, or the wickedness of the wickedness, or wicked, come to an end. Well, that's just, you know, that's what he says. Let that come to an end. But establish the just. Watch what he says. For the righteous God testeth the minds and the what? The hearts. So what we've got to realize is this, is we just need to let God look at our hearts, look at our lives. Let him do an examination of our hearts. So when we begin to think about how is our heart examined, it just begins with him giving a diagnostic test of our heart. Secondly, another way is after we've had after he's tested our hearts and he's looked at our heart, he shares the results. Have you ever had a test done and you're waiting for the results? You're waiting for the results. You know, a lot of times you're 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 kind of in limbo. You're saying, "Well, Lord, I want to hear the 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 results if they're good." But they may be what? They may be bad. I know here the other day I had my uh, annual checkup after my stroke. I have to have an annual checkup every, every year and uh, on the medication that I'm on. And uh, about two weeks before I um, had my checkup, I'm just going to be honest. Y'all know me. Y'all know who I am, okay? I had not exactly been a good boy for about three months. <laughs> A little too much fried chicken, maybe a hamburger, French fry along the way, some things I really shouldn't eat. So for about two weeks, this is bad, this is confession time. Okay? For about two weeks, buddy, I was just straight in there, Jack. Nothing fried, nothing but water, just be a good boy. And I was a good boy for two weeks. And it worked. And it worked. <laughs> Oh, didn't it, baby? All, everything come back in my blood. Did it come back? They said, man, he is doing great. I thought, thank you, Lord. <laughs> it come back great. So I went back to Friday. <laughs> but the report come back great. And I thought, thank you, Lord. The Lord is good. And he looked at me and said, you knucklehead, you. I'll tell you what. Okay. But you know, a lot of times those results uh, can be good or they can be bad. But you know what? When we really look at what God's wanting to do in our lives, after he does a diagnostic test of our hearts and our lives, who we are, we've got to realize that sometimes the results may come back in such a way where they may not be good. So here's a question. If God does a test on our heart, Will these be some of the results that he finds? Look with me. Proverbs chapter 6. Okay. Will these be some of the things that God might find as he does a test of our hearts? Watch this. Chapter 6, beginning in verse 16. These six things doeth the Lord hate, even seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that are swift to run into mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that soweth discord amongst the drug. What if God examines our heart and he says, well, the results have come back. And this is what I find. I hope and pray that when God examines our hearts, the things that are listed here will not be what he finds as a result of examining our hearts. Well, we have the test. He gives us results. And then what does a doctor do usually? He writes you out of what? Prescription. Well, God gives us a prescription. Here's his prescription. Very short 
little verse. How do we defend this? How? What is the prescription that we really need? That we might overcome the ailments that we have spiritually. I'm just going to read it. I'm going to tell you what it is. You're going to be phoning through the pages looking for it. Then I'll tell you what it is. Listen to this. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but it's the best piece of word advice I can give you somebody. I thank God in heaven will say, here's the prescription. Hide my word in your heart that you may not sin against me. That's Psalm 119, verse 11. Y'all, yes, there's a diagnosis. There's the results that can happen. There's a prescription. But here's something else. After you have a prescription, you still have to be on some type of a maintenance program, right? That's kind of like this. After my stroke, I have the prescription. We have you know, my prescription, the medicine that I have to take. But you know what? Even after I take my medicine that I have to take every day, guess what? That doesn't mean that, hey, I can just eat and do what I want to. It means that I still have to be careful and keep it between the what? The lines. I still have a maintenance that I have to keep up with. Certain things that I have to watch. Sir, I can't just do all that I used to want to do and eat all that I used to. You know the way I used to eat? It didn't matter what time of the day, where I was, or what I wanted. I ate everything that didn't eat me. <laughs> Buddy, if it was happy hour, not with liquor, but happy hour during the shake hour, if I wanted to shake, I'd whip it in there and just get me a shake about 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon after after eating a Big Mac fries and an apple pie and about three glasses of tea. <laughs> it didn't bother me. But guess what? Now, i got to be on a maintenance program. Yes, just one glass of tea and four apple pies and no cheeseburger. But anyway, <laughs> gotta be on, gotta have a maintenance program. Now, how do we have a maintenance program, you know, from a spiritual perspective? I want to share with you how that happens, okay? Look with me in Proverbs chapter 7, verses 24, excuse me, verse 23 and following. Watch this. This is how it happens spiritually. He says this, beginning basically in verse 24. He says, Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend. And attend. Excuse me, I'm in the wrong chapter. Right? Yeah. Proverbs chapter 4. I, I'm over chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. As soon as I said that, I said, that's not the verse I'm looking for. Chapter 4, verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of what? Life. Put away from thee the crooked mouth and perverse lips. Put far away from thee. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right nor to the left. Remove thy feet from evil. If folks, if we will do those four or five verses right there, Spiritually, that's the way that we maintain our life as we journey through life spiritually. Those verses right there is the maintenance program that God would have for you and for me. I really believe that. And when we begin to practice that, great things can happen. Let me kind of conclude with this this morning on the last thought I want us to think about, and that's this. God stress tests our thoughts. What do you mean by that, Brother Steve? I want you to notice that he also says, try me and know my thoughts. See, not only do we need to examine our hearts, but how is our thinking? That's the next thing that he looks at. It's the next thing he diagnoses about us. Is he says, yep, your heart needs some maintenance. Your thinking needs some maintenance. What's the doctor's advice in regard to maintaining our thinking. Well, first of all, he gives us some general advice. Look with me in Proverbs, okay? Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23. Watch what he says here. 23 verse 7. He says, as a man thinketh in his heart, what does he say? So is it. So which that tells us this, that he is saying, if you come and visit with me, the spiritual doctor, 
when I begin to look at your thinking, what we've got to realize some general advice is this. You need to guard your mind, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's general advice. Then he says, I want to share with you how you can take some, some precautionary measures. Turn with me to the book of James. James chapter 1, verse 8. Now he's talking to us about our thinking. He says, okay, let me share with you how you can help in the area of your spiritual walk in your thinking. This is some precautionary measures. Watch what he says in chapter 1 from the book of James, verse 8. He says, a double-minded man is unstable in what? All his ways. Now what in the world would, would he be saying when he says that? He's saying this, listen, spiritually speaking about our thinking. He says, we've got to come to a place in our life to where we begin to realize that we've got to think in God's ways. I'm going to tell you the biggest thing that we get into today in our Christian walk in faith is this. And listen to me very carefully. I have to battle with it. Everybody has to battle with it. It's this. Serving God is more than coming here to church on Sunday morning. It's how you think and what you do through the week. See, I want to tell you something. You know the biggest thing God that Satan is after? It's your heart and your mind. Those are the two big things. And as you think of the Word of God says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Which means this. You can come to church, but when you walk out those doors and you live this week, how are you thinking? There you go. What do you think about life? What do you listen to me, gentlemen? Listen to me carefully. You can come to church all you want. But if you work with some lady and you're lusting after her every day, you need to get that right first of all. You can come to church all you want to, but skim money at work. You need to get that right. Some of you are saying now, oh, he's going to meddle now. He's going to get ready to start preaching now. We're getting ready to go. But what I'm saying is this. What we've got to realize is this. We gotta take those precautions. And when we when we say we're gonna do we're gonna live like this, but I'm gonna act like we make people think of this way. God says you got to come together on that. See, what is the consistency and the maintenance in our thinking? Here again, let God's word speak. Listen to what it says in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, I'm just gonna read it for you, then you hear again because everybody be going, oh, for now, I've done run out of time. Man. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. I'll tell you, but just listen. You can keep turning a little bit. It says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. He says, look, you've got to keep focus. Now, general advice, there's some cautionary ideas, there's some things that we have to be consistently working at along the way. What's the final prescription? Here is the final prescription, I believe, that is so important for us to realize. And I'm going to begin to read these verses. And when I read these verses, I want you just to be thinking about what has been said. It's basically one verse, but it's real long. Watch, watch this. What is the prescription that we need for our minds spiritually? Here it is. Finally, brother. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, and whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Mm -hmm. It's found in the book of Philippians. So as we bring all of this together and as we conclude this morning, remember this. David was basically saying this, Lord, may you examine my heart and my thoughts. Examine me. That as you lead in my life, that I might be led. See, if God leads, we can only really let him lead. And can we be led when we let him have our hearts? A couple of questions with heads bowed and eyes closed this morning. One is this How is your heart today?
how is your thinking today? And finally, <coughs> what advice is your spiritual doctor, God above, giving to you? What is he recommending that you need in your life today? Father in heaven, I pray this morning that as I have tried to share from your word, I know, Father, that I, hasn't, I haven't done the best of jobs, but I've just shared with your people from your word about things that are very real in our lives. And that is, where is our hearts? Where are our minds today? And Father, this morning, I pray that if there's any of us that just need to come to this altar, have a moment of renewal that we may have. <coughs> Lord, there may be some that are just saying, God, today I just cry out to you because the hardest thing in the world for me to do is to be honest with you. God, I just want peace. And God, today I just want to lay a lot of this old load down at your feet and just surrender. <coughs> Father, this morning, any decisions that need to be made, I pray that it will be made today in a way that will honor you and bring peace to the hearts of the life those who make a commitment to you. Bless this moment now, I pray, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Will you please stand to your feet? Hey, you stand to your feet for the day that comes number 187. As we begin to sing, there may be a few that may say, there's a few things on my heart today that I need to bring to the altar. Maybe you need to pray today as we begin to sing. You feel free to come. Thank you. 